Hey guys, it's Matt. Uh, per the movie Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, this is Everything, Every Truth Topic, All at Once. Uh, this is going to be long, probably catching up on a lot of things per uh, the week that was, or the week where I couldn't communicate with you. First, let's do, um, I'll try to keep each segment very short, guys. Maybe we'll do four minutes or less. Matt, every time you say that, it goes 14 minutes. I'll, I will try to keep it within the parameters. Four or five minutes or less on a recap of the last video. Um, the last conversation before you were born. I hope you check it out if you haven't had a chance to check it out yet. Most of the comments uh, have been good. I appreciate your comments. It's where I spent most of my week that was uh, last week when I couldn't communicate with you. Um, and the original last conversation before you were born um, needed a lot of work. And it still needs work before I, I insert it back into the end of the book uh, PDF. But um, guys, again, I'm going to go over some of the comments I got about the last conversation before you were born. Um, in the introduction, I was like, you know, this has to be kind of a sci-fi presentation. Most of it does reflect my belief set, but it's like, I think I might have said 80-20. You know, 20% does and 80% does, but it has to be presented in a certain way so it's interesting, so it gets you to think, so it flows, so it comes off like a, more of like a sci-fi fun presentation than something that's overly serious. So, Matt, you're already into your like two or your four minutes. One of the comments was, I don't like, I don't know what it said exactly, but it was, it was very um, get your back up, explain the use of the term master. Um, I hear you. You know, I, I said in the introduction, don't, don't latch on to every little, little thing. Master isn't always derogatory. The original last conversation before you were born was written like the old David Carradine Kung Fu TV show who had flashbacks of the, the ancient master, the Kung Fu master, and Grasshopper, the disciple. Master, tell me about this t style of Kung Fu. Master, well, it, that, the master loves the disciple in that case. It's not always about slavery or so. It's not always negative. So I hear you. I don't believe I have a master either in the spiritual realm. I was like, don't latch on to anything too much. I hear you. Okay, explain the use of master. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, what else was there? Oh, I wanted to wanted to ask you you guys this. Um, there was some. Uh, I mean, I expect Christians to pop in and be like, "You don't, Matt. This is a ridiculous exercise. Your salvation is through Jesus Christ." I appreciate the Christians that are still here at this channel. We still have a lot in common in terms of, um, at, you know, these creeps we have to identify and and fend off their bullshit. So. I do have a question, though, about what is the Christian perspective on before you were born? I don't know. Is it in the Bible? I have no idea. Um, what does What is the Christian perspective? Where were you before you were born? Or is the Christian perspective you you didn't exist? I, I don't know. But if you did exist, um, Zara, not a good time. Zara, if you did exist from a Christian perspective, if you did exist spiritual, at least before you were born, then why were you born? I don't know, you know, why would you take a risk to go into one lifetime for potentially a, a big reward or a very, 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 very nasty punishment? Um, it doesn't make sense to go into the incarnation, if you know what I mean. Sorry, Czar, it's not a good time, sweetie. I'm sorry. Come on, no. So wrapping up the last conversation before you were born recap, um, yeah, I, don't, I guess it was the wrong word, but master could be your higher self, an aspect of you. I tried to keep it as open as possible so you can interpret into your own belief set, but maybe I have a little bit of work to do there. Um, in this case, of course, the, you know, you, you, if you say a, there's a spiritual guide, you know, that was with you before you were born, then that triggers people. If you say master, there's, you're never going to be able to please everybody. So just that's why I tried to do that in the introduction. There's no way to make it completely generic. Um, then the presentation uh, becomes no good. But in this case, it was, of course, a loving higher self ascending. I called it the experiment just to make it a little bit of a sci-fi exercise, but it could be an aspect of itself being sent into this incarnation. That's the loving aspect. Remember, I don't want to get into a big thing here, but we'll talk about it some other time. The, if you've seen Apple TV's Severance, that to me is ab absolutely could be a higher self to incarnated spiritual self presentation, but kind of it's it's not a loving 
thing. It's presented in severance. The higher self could be could be a a a, a user, not quite an abuser, not quite a nasty entity, but it's the in Apple TV severance. It sends somebody goes to work, and when they're at work, they forget about who they are in the outside world, and when they come out from work, they don't remember who they were when they were at work. And two different, completely different personalities develop. Um, that shows not for everybody. It's very strange. I found it fascinating, but it is not for everybody. Some people would find it absolutely horrible. But it's in this case, the if the higher self would be the person outside of work, is using the aspect of itself to do the work without having to do the work itself or to go through the experience. And if that happened, and that is, you know, should I do a last conversation before you were born where, you know, that if it reflected that, it would be completely different. The higher self sent you an aspect of itself spiritually into this earth to have the experience when it doesn't have to do it at all. It sent you in here. It's, you, you know, it's not very friendly. It's using you. That's the, that's not my personal belief set, but that is the, the severance perspective. And severance, of course, doesn't say a damn thing about higher self or spiritual anything. It's just potential interpretation of it. And a sh the show that, I don't know, when it, it has a feel that there is much, much more to it than what's being presented at the first level for the basic popcorn cruncher, which is similar to, you know, Vanessa's, uh, uh, VA's retro causality language or spiritual message that can come through a song and you investigate the song and the backstory on the song is always the same. Um, what was it? Um, my favorite is always like Kenny Loggins. You know, this is it. Make no mistake. We're, oh, it was written because his father was uh, battling a dread disease, or his father was about to die, or um, what is it? Jason Mraz was it? You and I both. Oh, he had, he had a, a breakup. It's always about a girl. It's always about a breakup. And um, whether the artist that wrote it, um, you know, is de delivering a spiritual message or not, usually not. And if it is there, the artist to me is unaware or it's unintentional. It's always about a girl. You know, we, we found that with the Tears for Fears breakdown. It sounds very spiritual, heavy. And then there's a line about um, losing her or she was one of a kind. And then the Normie immediately just here, Matt, see, it's about a girl, you idiot. That's all. You just throw one line in about a breakup and you'll never be able to convince anybody that, well, you'll never be able to convince any anybody down the cul-de-sac anyway of any of this stuff. So last part about the, the last video, um, Tony, and I want to say a Tony and a lot of smart people, I want to talk, but that, tri that, that phrase triggers people. They hate when I say that. Not, not I think 95% of you are fine. Like what else am I supposed to say? I'm not sure how to present that. It just means of all the people I've sampled over, over um, you know, all the years, um, not too many people were saying what Tony said, but others have said it. That you you agreed to be here, okay? You you your spiritual aspect of you, whatever you were, your higher self wasn't tricked to come in to the earth realm. You agreed to be here, okay? So if you agreed to be here, you know, as bad as it is, as bad as it gets, uh, the spiritual side of you or your higher self knows what it got you into. It's here for a reason, you know. Use it use it and, and do the work many of course believe that which I, I this is what I, that is what i believe that um you wouldn't get anything out of it if it was just lying under a tree with lotion like i've said i'm not going to get too too graphic well matt the fact that you said you're not going to get graphic just put the image into our mind you son of a beach yeah it does doesn't it it's like i'm not going to talk about my projectile vomiting here at uh, but you just did you idiot sorry um so I, this is my, you know, my, my belief set is, you know, when, when Tony would talk to me about the stuff, it resonated with me. Um, yeah, we, we chose to be here. Others in this, many in our community believe that what I do not believe, that um, this realm was something else, then it was taken over, it was completely hijacked. Uh, I think the creeps, the creeps are creeps. The creeps are assholes. What they have done... I mean, even in the last three years is unfathomable, even to those that have studied it for the last 10 years, unfathomable where they've put, moved the position of the world into. But all of this shit show is for a reason. It has to be difficult. 
in my opinion, or we wouldn't get anything out of it. Others believe, you know, no, Matt, it was hijacked. It was just lying under trees with lotion, and they came, these creeps hijacked it, and what would you get out of it? What would you get out of it? Extended period of the, um, what is, this is the Iron Age and the Kali Yuga. It's going to be bad. What, but but I, don't, I don't even know if it is, is there an extended age of um, the Golden Age or the Golden Girls Age where just there's no evil, there's no creeps. What do you get out of that spiritually? Also, when you, whenever you, God forbid, mention this incarnation as a test or a trial, well, that triggers a whole group of truthers. It doesn't, does it really matter what label you put on it? Test, trial, just because you say test, oh boy, here she comes. That doesn't mean, um, it doesn't mean then there's a judge and a real test. It's just saying, it's it, it, in a basic roundabout way, it's just saying it's meant to be hard. And it's, you know, it's there for a reason. You know, test it triggers people. And if you used to call this incarnation a school, oh, that triggers a whole separate group of people. Well, it doesn't literally mean school. It, do you do you believe deep down in your inner knowing you're here to learn something? What does your inner knowing tell you? What does your heart tell you? Jerry Maguire, uh, Jay, they fired Jerry Maguire, did it at Cronin's. <laughs> um, what does your heart tell you? Your heart, if you sit back and just, just pause for 10 seconds, you, it's, it's pretty, it calls out to me pretty definitively that, yeah, we're here for a reason. We're here to have a spiritual ass kicking um, in, in a way. These creeps play, play a role. So if we're here for a reason, then what's so bad about the word test or school? It, it, well, that triggers a whole group of people. It doesn't, you know, it's like the person that said, why are you using the term master? So of all the thousands of words thrown out in the presentation, you just have to latch on to one little thing. Anyway, I guess that's, a, I guess I way exceeded my time limit. Let's move on to another topic. Get this thing's ass out of your face. Guys, that's Bootsy back there, by the way. Um, four minutes or less, I promise, and people will still throw, throw rubber duckies. Four minutes or less on the Made Bad on Purpose theme. I know I just covered it on Free Voice, but because of the new release of Amazon's destruction of the Lord of Rings, Ring of Power, that's out now. I watched an hour of it, and it is bad. It is bad. So I'm timing myself. I promise no more than four minutes. Uh, because it, you're right. I mean, people are saying, Matt, this is a screen exercise. It is, but it is so fascinating to me. Um, I watched almost an hour of it, uh, Lord of the Rings, and it is bad. It, you don't care one bit about the characters. You don't invest yourself in them or the story. It's cold. It's calculated. All these reviews came out. I watched many of them uh, before the series was officially released. They predicted how bad it would be based on just the trailers. And you could predict how bad it would be just based on the trailers. And now that it's out, there's a thousand other videos um, saying how bad it is. And they're right. It is. But I'm still, I guess I keep watching these videos because I'm just waiting for one writer, or not one writer, one reviewer, just to, to come around and have a clue and say, you know, again, this is now one more thing that's destroyed the canon of the original or destroyed even the, the three movies that weren't that good with Frodo. The other three movies with Bilbo Baggins, that was pretty terrible. So there were some dragon scenes that were decent, but the original three, now this has destroyed that. Just I'm waiting for just one of these guys or girls to say, something strange is going on here. Maybe it's on purpose. We'll never go there. It's not that dissimilar to the Ship of Fools theory. The Ship of Fools, all our friends and family are on the Ship of Fools. Everything is just normal. They can't see through the presentation of anything, and neither can these reviewers. How much time do I have? Two minutes. Neither can these reviewers. They're just incapable of ever going where I would go or where we would go. And what do they do? I do comment below a lot of these videos. Guys, I don't have 10 years to explain it. It's on purpose. Can't you see that by now? They 10 years ago, they knew what the fans wanted. You know, it's, I've said this before, but flow in a flow of progressive, you know, obnoxious flow. She has a focus group in some of her commercials. They could have had a fo if they weren't sure what the fans wanted, they could have had focus groups. Any second graders can figure out. You just sample the fans and see what they want. They knew 10 years ago. So when it keeps happening, Matt, it's the same thing you said in the. It's fascinating to me because how mo at this point, what is most fascinating, okay, is not what the movie studios are doing. 
Okay, we understand not milk tactics to destroy all that was once good. Hope maybe we'll talk about that a little, a little bit later. What's going on there metaphysically in, in the spiritual battle we're all engaged in, but that's that's a separate issue. I understand not milk tactics. Okay, we understand why they would make it bad on purpose. One minute. But what's so fascinating to me is why these these reviewers are all ship of fools on the frequency on the download. They will never be able to come around. And, and see that it's on purpose. And again, you'd think just another year, two, five years goes by, they're going to be saying the same things. The writers are out of touch. The, the, the executives, the liberal communist executives are just pushing woke themes and SJW. How many times can you keep going to that well before you take a step back and, um, you know, and say, this is, this is, this has to be on purpose. It's ship of fools. This, this is almost proof of the ship of fools. Now, if they all start coming around, then, okay, woo, that's very good on our part, because if they come around, these, these reviewers come around to it's made bed on purpose, they can come around to other things. But if, the, if my philosophy or theory on Ship of Fools, ooh, ooh, four minutes, is, is accurate, it's, they're, on, they're on the download just like everybody else. They're on the frequency. They're, a, they're unable or incapable of seeing certain parts of reality. That's part of the Ship of Fools theory. So... I guess these reviewers will just, they'll be saying the same things a year from now, two years from now. Do we expect the not milk and the, and the one of the main tentacles of it, Hollywood, to start making good stuff all of a sudden? No. Anyway, sorry to go a bit over. All right, new segment. Um, for the, This one is for the back of the Amish classroom. Let's just do the half page. It is, um, I really kind of start to consider that downtime I had, um, you know, the, the week of jail where there's so many different types of people here and we just trying to jump into things thinking everybody's on the same page and got to bring people up to speed but 20 more seconds guys on the on the last topic before this one um people would say and i forgot to mention it, well why is game of thrones bucking this trend it seems pretty darn good why did top gun 2 uh buck the trend that we'll talk about that in the future there are reasons why you know it proves it actually proves the point they can make good stuff but there are reasons why some things still have to be very good and we'll talk about that that could be a whole future video um excuse me okay um the half page guys for anybody that's new where we and you you heard a lot of my half page philosophies come out of the last convert the last video the last conversation before you were born um Basically, uh, the one thing to add to the half page that's something that came out of the last conversation before you were born is the idea that soul is the battleground. I forget how I put it. Um, something like um, every battle, every, every war needs battlegrounds, the spiritual war, in between understanding and holding on to divine self and fostering that aspect and in, in this incarnation actually maybe just remembering it or holding on to the cliff it's the age where you're it's like to me it's you know it's that it's time to survive type thing just to hold on to who you are the essence versus the the imposters the ego self and all the parts of you that try to remove you from that that are almost like double agents of this reality 3d material reality system and and i said something like in in, in the last video um if there's a war or battles, there needs to be a battleground. And that potentially is what soul is, that that middle place um, to a degree. I mean, people have always, the smartest people I've ever come across have always put um, spirit as a term above soul. So what that means to me, and in my back and forth uh, with, with Tony, I didn't bow down to every single thing Tony said, but, but I haven't talked to him or emailed for a, a while. He's very, very smart, very, very wise. In, in many areas that I, I was not, and much of what he said resonated with me. Um, but these these people would say, you know, the spiritual part of you is the highest part of you, the the gateway or pathway out of here, back to a but part of you that's not here, or a higher self. Does it, if you really stop to pause, does anybody really believe your entire spiritual essence or soul, everything is inside this body? I mean, think about it. To me, it, it's ridiculous. Um, there could be a part, or a little spark plug, or a, a champion spark plug to, to light, to light the, the soul, ignites the, uh, the the body, or or an, animates the body, so we can live a lifetime. 
but spirit is like a something that is here but it's also there soul you know maybe the battleground or or the actual thing or the energy that is um igniting the spark plug making the the, the body um animate for an example even people think even um you know if you put all the pieces of a squirrel together and you have the you 3d print the the muscles and the little arms and the legs and it it doesn't go it doesn't you know you hit it on the behind wake up it it needs a it needs something are you saying a, a squirrel has a soul it, yes it has something like a soul okay that 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 to me that's more and and of people I've I've listened to over the years that it's more local a soul is more local to this plane of existence or potentially third third dimension maybe maybe even fourth dimension but that's it to me it's it's like the battleground where the, this reality system and its minions and its tricks and its tactics are fighting for your soul this is where all this legend and lore and and we've heard this thousands of times in literature and art and movies um the, the devil will steal your soul or you'll it, so you p potentially could lose your soul here but that doesn't necessarily in my opinion mean that you're spiritually harmed it means maybe spiritually per the no consequences people perspective spiritually you might be fully protected the the element or aspect of you that's not here but you know you, you didn't you you lost this earthly battle you didn't do what you were meant to do here this brings the soul token concept uh back into the mix and it kind of makes it okay from the no consequences perspective and I'm, i know this isn't coming out right but no consequences people um think of the soul as the battleground okay you lose it to this place what you are out of here spiritually may or probably still remains intact okay that this is a this is a different um a different spin on what we talked about many times over the years see um the, the no consequences people hated my term of soul tokens and i and if it makes sense why they didn't like the idea that you could give yourself away here you could you, you they would say your higher self or your spiritual self would never put you in a reality system that could doom you down into the Pope's abyss, or what Pope Francis said, bad souls don't go to hell. Pope Francis said, bad souls just go to the abyss, just go to nothing, go to the netherworld, or dissolve. The, the no consequences people didn't like that. You can't give yourself away. Ah, but but maybe that that is kind of a um, an insulation, the soul, or where the where the spirit just dabbles a little bit of itself in this thing called soul. That's the battleground. So if if this place you can give potential soul away or soul tokens away in this place by bowing down and doing what everything everything that the not nilk wants following Ryan Seacrest around the red carpet I mean all the seven deadly sins put, putting stock into the wrong things coveting the wrong things not having any sense of your spiritual self all the things people can do wrong in this reality system well it's kind of a long list no reason to continue maybe there maybe that term soul token is correct if you see what i'm saying because the no consequences people they thought they interpreted that um like you're giving a piece of your spirit away it's like i don't know if this is coming out right but i doubt i'll re-record it it's like there's a you know in a the, the bonfire trash can in the movie rocky he had his brother frank stallone doing the doo-wop <laughs> and they didn't I, I said this recently they, they didn't do that in philly in the 70s doo-wop over the burning trash doo-wop take you back do 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 give me a break um but he had to do that scene because then they they recreated that i think in rocky three where adrian said do 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 it's not do 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 it's do 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 whatever um so the, there's a burning trash can of spirit that goes that's eternal okay it doesn't have a frank stallone huddling around all he did was ride on the coattails of his of his of his brother but it's a it's a forever take your hands away from the fire man it's a forever um a light a spirit immortal always was always will be connected to original source whatever your belief set is god whatever so it just think of a torch put like a little roll up a philadelphia inquirer and dip it in some gasoline that's on the street there in south philly and light it and then throw that over into this environment and see if you can make it burn brighter or, or make it burn hotter and then bring it back maybe to the original source of fire and if this fire over here is the is the soul playing out in this reality system um if it burns out 
Well, the original trash can is the immortal trash. Matt, why are you you're relating a trash can in South Philly to the eternal flame in some way? You know, is that is that the truth drop they're trying to give us via the stupid presentations of what Not Milk does with eternal flame? Matt, that's don't you know anything? That's the ode to Lucifer. Oh, we're well, not. Let's just keep it. You know, let's just let's get back on track. Um, okay, fire um, burns out over here. You know, it didn't work out. People gave pieces of the fire away or gave soul tokens away. The original flame is unharmed. Is it, you know, is, is there any merit to this? I just kind of, when I was typing up or, or rewriting sections of the last conversation you had before you were born, it's just really came to me. And I only worked it in one small section that this concept of soul, you know, could, is a battleground of sorts. And if, you know, if you lose it, or you lose, you know, are you still spiritually protected? You know, probably, but it's, it's like the concept, if you want to do it with severance, Apple TV severance, it's like if the, the any that goes into work that has no rem remembrance or recollection of what happens to that person's body when they're outside of work, the any at work, no matter if they if they fall down an elevator shaft, for example, or they, something happens, it, it's, it can't harm the Audi self, where of course, you know, that didn't work in the, in the TV show Severance. It, they were one in the same body. But, you know, what the no consequences people would say, what happens here, you know, you're, you would never agree to take that big of a risk just for, you know, to be in the spiritual Michael Spinks to Mike Tyson ass, ass kicking, spiritual ass kicking. You would never risk all that you are. You know, you, you put a little, throw, throw a little bit of yourself into a battleground called soul and see if you can double, if you can spiritually double your money. <laughs> you see what I'm saying, um, Matt? Okay, give it up. You're losing people at this point, but I'm going to keep on this topic. There's something to it. All right, well, I didn't do any part of what I said I was going to do. The half page went right into the, the high level conversation. Um, so I need to do the half page. I'll, we'll keep it, well, We'll keep it five minutes or less for the back of the Amish classroom. Yeah, uh, back of the Amish classroom is like, what was you promised us? And now you started talking about soul as battleground <laughs> spitballs. <laughs> Stop it. Stop those spitballs. Get out. Go go clear a field. Sorry. Um, OK, so to me, I, I'm not I don't I don't have it all figured out, but I think I do for myself. But I'm not arrogant enough to say to you need to listen to me. Or just, I, I think it's simple here. I really do. I, do I have it all figured out for me? I do for me. Okay, but I'm open to change. Anyway, Matt, stop apologizing. Um, it's it's simply I when I see the Ventruvian man, you know, to me, being pulled apart by elephants. To me, it's like a spiritual tug of war. That's the way I see this reality. On one side is your true spiritual self. Okay, the side that is being removed from you, that the knot milk is looking to cut off. The other side is the false self. The, the self that this reality system wants to build up, that, that, that gets you to believe that's all there is to you. Uh, ego, mind, uh, frontal lobes, brain, logical reasoning over inner knowing, logical reasoning over, um, you know, what does your heart tell you, inner tuning fork. It might be left brain versus right brain, that whole dynamic with one little bridge, this corpus callosum, colostomy, whatever the thing is that, that separates the two, that, that connects the two. That doesn't make any sense. That We could do a whole video on that. That makes no sense. You know, is that, in a way, that's related to the whole duality that's going on here in this whole reality system. I mean, by itself, that proves Darwin wrong. But, okay, guys. Matt, the half page for the spitballers, please. Okay, sorry. It's simple. It's just simply, it, this is it, this, the term that the truth community has used forever, spiritual battleground, spiritual war. It's all true. It simply means this system here, for whether it's playing a role, it was designed to do this, it was hijacked. It simply is out to get you to cut all ties with your spiritual self. Now, I'll pause because your inner knowing tells you that's right. It's what are they doing all this for? for? What are they? What are they playing all these millions and millions of tricks on us for? 
it every single trick, every single ruse, every single deception, every single Oprah Winfrey free presentation where Tom Cruise jumps up on a couch and all that ridiculous. Everything here, it, it's so simple, is to get a real spirit, how many of us there are left, to forget ourselves. It's that simple? Yeah, it's that simple. You'll never put on Don Lemon at CNN and frauds like that. And he'll be, he'll be, Don, look at that. Don Lemon's talking about the spiritual side of ourselves. You'll never hear it. They don't talk about it in school. They don't, so this, what this whole system is out to do. And then if you abandon this or you, it's not abandoning something you know you had, Matt, people don't even know they have it. Good point. They then attach Oh, ego, mind, body, what does society tell me I should be doing to be a success? It's so simple. And, um, you know, what are, the, what are these, the creeps and the way I presented in the last conversation, the creeps, the wardens, the minions, demons, yeah, they get something for, for, for I believe they're fulfilling a role. Okay, I, that's my belief set. That's not hijacked and, I, it, you know, to me, that is so ridiculous because that assumes this reality system was created by whatever you call God, source, your higher selves, an aspect of you, whatever your belief is, and it just got out of control. Do you, whatever the power, th- I mean, just think about it. And then the, whether you have a, a, you're a, a, a certain religion or of your God or whatever it may be that's outside this system, obviously to create you know, it's unfathomable for our minds to believe this was not created by something. We just can't fathom. There has to be a creator. We, we're not really that intelligent to think past that. The chicken and the egg, it had to come from somewhere. So whatever whatever put, put this together, um, do you think, does your inner knowing tell you it would be slightly more powerful than the creeps and uh, George Soros' ilk? I mean, does, do you think it would be a slightly more powerful and secret societies, yeah, a little bit by a factor of trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon trillions. So there, there is no other explanation to me. It's so simple. What is happening here is by design. No, Matt, they, this, I agree with you about the spiritual battle, but it was hijacked. And it's, oh, so this, these immortal, these Im- immensely powerful entities are your God, or even this is almost from even from a Christian God perspective. It's just, oh, they took over and there's nothing, this all powerful thing or your spiritual self or whatever it may be. There's Matt, stop going through the litany every time. We understand. Call it, just call it, um, just in general, come up with a phrase in general for what might be outside of this place, no matter what your belief set is. Newman from Seinfeld. That's blasphemous. What call it? Newman. You, in this case, we're just going to call every possible belief set a Newman, all-powerful creator of this realm. Newman from down the hall at Seinfeld. You think Newman's not powerful enough to come in and say, you George Soros creatures are a little bit out of control? Um, no, it's what's going on now even is by design. You know, I alluded in the last conversation that there could be a contractual arrangement or the, or the creeps Matt, the creeps violating their contract and what they've done in terms of turning up the volume and the, what they've done over the last almost three years. Can you believe I'm saying this? It's been almost, it's pushing the neighborhood of two and a half to three years, this bullshit. Well, Matt, if you're saying it's by design, then you're taking, essentially taking the creeps off the hook. I don't want to take the creeps off the hook. Okay, I don't, I don't, and I, I, I do believe... You know, this, this structure, you have to have creeps to benefit spiritually. You need to come in and get your Michael Spinks spiritual ass kicking by Mike Tyson. But within, you know, within parameters, I, I, it was uh, reflecting my belief set to a degree when I talked about contra- a, con- a contract or are they violating the contract, these creeps? I believe they have if, the, if contractual arrangement exists. But this is the nitty gritty nuances in the weeds. In general, I didn't want to go into the weeds. In general, you either believe that this is basically, this this tough reality is kind of meant to be for our, our own better, betterment, or you believe, oh, it was just supposed to be the golden age with, on a, with a sunny day, a palm tree, and a jar of lube. And these creeps just took over, and the all-powerful Newman outside of the reality just can't do anything about it. Oh, sure. That doesn't sit right with me doesn't sit right with me but these creeps here 
are fulfilling a role. And I don't believe what Tony talked about. They're a different type of entity or incarnation than we are, a lower level, a, a called them a sequential incarnation, uh, where we're, we're, uh, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, we're a simultaneous, he said. We're a simultaneous. They're a sequential. Um, we are taking the, we're much more advanced as a spiritual entity, taking a bigger leap, taking a bigger risk, coming in Tommy, the, the who, the deaf, dumb, and blind kid, where they retain past uh, life memories, technology, things that have been passed along, ways to manipulate reality, ways to execute the trick or the ruse on real souls and spirits. And everything here is the yin-yang the yin -yang inverse. So I've said this a million times, but you can't talk about it enough. If Jeff Bezos, Jeff the Bezos, Jeff Bezos of Amazon, one, I'll sell Amazon for one trillion. Yeah. He would sell it for a lot more than that. He wouldn't sell it because it's his, he's a creep playing that role. But if he's a big man here, and this guy down the cul-de-sac here, they, they covet, oh, I want to be like Mike. I want to be like Jeff Bezos and Michael Jordan. If he's a big shot here, uh-oh, everything here is backwards and reversed. Flip it, yin and yang. Then where it matters, where it counts, he's not a big deal. You're a big deal. And I'll, I always have to do this on the back end. Somebody coming across this video, you, you idiots here in your own little your little circles just trying to make yourself feel better and Matt make trying to to reach out to all you losers and oh I came across this this quantum of conscious he just tries to reach out to his crazy conspiracy ilk to make them feel better because they're all beaten down in this reality and they don't have good jobs and they can't get promoted to senior part and he just tries to make you feel good and that's his, his ruse believe whatever you want is there any let's pause and, and have inner knowing and inner tuning fork and your Jerry Maguire come out they fire Jerry Maguire Cronin's what does it tell you? Let's let Matt, you're, you just shut up and be quiet, Matt. Let your spiritual five seconds. What is it? What does it tell you about who you really are versus Jeff Bezos? If you back up 400,000 uh, miles and look down. I mean, it's so obvious. Anybody that would run around and look at look at Melvin P. Look at Melvin P. and the role and he this and that. Oh, he's just so worried about the health. And now he's doing his Action Jacksonation, uh, Carl Weathers Action Jackson campaigns. And any, just the, you know, I might even be, be, I would, might think that even, you know, it's not the complete spiritual inverse, that we're so much more advanced than these, these creatures or these cretins. I might pause for a second if... Like they live like normal lives that would re reflect the power they developed in this reality. If Bill just was like, you know, I'm worth a hundred and some billion. I've done all I can do with this company, Microsoft. Now I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to, going to, you know, I, I just watched this movie the other night with Jack Nicholson and they just sat on the pyramids and I'm going to go do that. I'm going to do some things for me. If he acted normally, I might actually pause, but they, they can't get out of the defined role that they're given. It's so obvious. They can't break their script. Do you think Melvin P will ever go away? There'll be some, he'll push this agenda. Then I'll have to, and it's not as simple as Matt. They're in love with power. Well, to a degree they are, but that's, they're, they're not fed energetically the same way we are. They don't have, they, who knows if what, what, maybe they're just animated locally with something called soul. They, maybe they don't have, they don't have the same spiritual connections that we have. I mean, Tony talked about that and I believe every bit of it, but are they trapped here? Are they doomed here? It doesn't matter. You can just you can just sense and Matt, you're going on and on. Let's just let's just move on. That you a big shot here? Oh, then where it counts, you ain't you ain't nothing. <laughs> you know, it's that it's that simple. Um, can I prove it to anybody? No, but it is obvious to me at this point. And I ain't saying it. To, I don't look in the mirror and say it to, to myself to make it myself feel better. So half page is simple. Um, all we have to do is, oh, I've been, this whole reality system is designed to pull me over here. Well, there must be something very important over here I'm missing. I need to get in touch with this side of me and cut th this side off, like cut spider webs, cut spider webs, cut Jacob Marley chains, detach from it. It's simple. It really is simple. Um, but, um, you know, that's just, that's just my perspective. Let's, let's move on to a different segment. Actually, let's continue a bit with the half page. Um, these are, are pretty important elements for anybody.
that's relatively new or jumped into this the last three or four years. Um, basically, everything here is fake. Um, there's no other way to really say it. Um, some sort of illusory reality, nothing really here is real. I, I take it as far as possible, not quite to Neo's matrix in the pod, but um, you know, I believe we almost live in basically one gigantic Mandela effect where everything, uh, or a dark city, where things change all the time. And we are synced up to the change where it doesn't seem like there's been any change. A few things that slip through the cracks Maybe where they're tinkering, it could be a side effect of where these creeps are tinkering with reality, could show up as Mandela effects. So in that regard, I mean, we, I believe we live in a fluid reality. Um, the sky could have been red yesterday or pick another color. Um, you know, not, not that we'll talk about the <laughs> magenta. We'll talk about the magenta magenda uh, in a moment. Um, Steffers continues to put an re- incredible amount of research into it, and I've, I've asked Steffers, said, Steffers, don't get too into the weeds. Please just co- give us a summary of where you are every, every few weeks, and she's going to do a summary. So the sky could have been red. It's blue today. It could have been red, but then it could have, it was always red back through time immemorial. It's blue today. It seems like to us it's always been blue. Well, that that's just the way this reality works, in my opinion, but I could never prove that to anybody, and if you're not Mandela affected, you don't really see that. But it, it that's not really neither here nor there in terms of the, the basic things I wanted to talk about, like everything being fake. Um, basic, the reason I started talking about fluid reality is that everything of any consequence breaks down when you investigate it, and it makes no sense. The normal person, or like my f- friend Tony, they're not willing, you know, the people on the ship of fools on the frequency and the download, they're not willing to investigate anything um to its to like going up the river to its original source or its original tributary or where the where the water starts flowing they're never willing to go far enough up the river to where we go to where it it all breaks down so and i mean everything you could you again the the, the concept I haven't talked about this for a while but the the room with ten thousand conspiracies or ten thousand it doesn't even have to be conspiracy just a presentation like throw a dart the civil war what it is, how it started, everything about it is not what a history book would say. Sure, there, there it doesn't mean it's all wrong. There, there, there is, there was a battle fought at something called Gettysburg. There, of course, it's not complete. You know, if I throw a dart into World War II, it doesn't mean that nothing went on in Pearl Harbor. No, of course, but, but it, but it breaks down in terms of what it, it's, what this not milk system or what authority or what the news says it is at the base level, the reasons for it, who started it, all, you know, the base, the pillars of it all fall apart. And this is it with everything, okay? Could there be some exceptions? Yeah. But one of the reasons we went through the truth journey that we went through, many of us that have been doing this for well over 10 years, is we just couldn't believe it to a degree. We would investigate this. We could see that some school events are, pause, questionable. But but, but then we started, well, wait a second. The whole presentation for why the reason this whole big war was fought is fought was that's all? And then we just kept going, that can't be. We just almost had to keep doing it to convince ourselves. And then you do it for 10 years. And it's like, well, it's kind of like back to the ruined movie franchises, ruined TV. They've ruined all this. Oh, a new uh, reiteration of Spider-Man's coming out. Are we going to, after all we've seen, are we going to believe that's going to be ruined? It's going to follow the same pattern or that's going to be different? So it's the same thing with these presentations with what authority and history says and the news and everything like that. There's, you know, there's going to be some things that slip through the cracks as potentially real and legitimate. So what? At this point to me, Everything is fake. No, go, you, then you move on to part two. You can think that the secret societies have, are running around executing tens of thousands of ruses and tricks and false history and pulling it off successfully every single time. Or you could say this is a, a symptom or a, a, a note we now notice an, an element or a feature of reality itself. No, no real world could pull all this off. If you we could pick five major conspiracies, no group of men in clandestine 
back rooms <laughs> could pull five of the big ones off, let alone 10,000. So it, we're not going to do that again. If uh, There's still people that believe that, but whatever. And they're still here for some reason. But um, okay, if you want to believe the little little blue people at night come in and change things, and it's just, it's just people swapping books out on shelves, then okay, I can't convince you. But to me, it's it's proved thousands of times over. No real world could pull this off. This is a whole fake construct. We're here now, whether it's it was the original intention or it was hijacked. What's the difference? The powerful play goes on. We're here. You can only you can you you know if you've got you go, what's what's for breakfast? We just have these eggs. We don't have no bacon. We got we don't have no sausage in Philly. We don't have no scrapple. We just have the eggs. Well, we got to make do with it. You know that's what we have. This is the reality we have. And if you don't believe we're here for, if some people believe we're here for no reason, or the, there's nothing more cerebrally slothtithic, cerebral, cerebral sloth, <laughs> than, than the atheist position. Cele, so I'm not going to try that again. Cele, the atheist position is cerebral sloth. <laughs> That's putting it kindly. This, they believe that a Big Bang <laughs> created everything, and we're here at random. Or just by accident, when the second law of thermodynamics says everything goes to entropy, the second law of thermodynamics, all these Richard Feynman types hang their hat on, says there's no possible way life could ever be created because everything goes towards entropy. The whole it's their it's a law of thermodynamics. So um, anyway, it's ridiculous. The, you know, obviously, if you do the math, it, 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 what part of the original book um, has still as a section. I haven't been over it quite a while that talks about if everything is what it's presented to be by history book or by Darwin, like you wouldn't be here if your grandfather didn't meet your grandmother, right? Or if, if, if preferences were different and your grandfather in a trench in World War II or World War I or whatever, uh, you know, that, boy, that you looking good today, Jake. They Let's say that, that happened and that wouldn't produce... No offspring. Not that there'd be anything wrong if your grandfather, um, you know, went away with Jake. But that, see, you wouldn't exist, right? So, so just, just two back. You, the, so you go back in time. So what do they say we are before Homo sapien, Homo erectus, and then another form of, um, ne- you know, missing link, Lucy or what, Monkey Man. Or what, it doesn't matter. You go back through. Um, basic, but this is what Darwin says, go back through basic primates. Like, what is that little thing, the marmot? <laughs> they said we were a marmot or something at one point. Is that what it, whatever? And then, oh, yeah, before that, you and I were bacteria. If you just do the probability that, see how it doesn't make sense that, well, yeah, to be exactly who you are, that marmot had to mate with that marmot exactly in the right way. It got you, The chances of you being here and me being here, according to science, is one in hundreds of trillions to the hundredth power. I mean, that's probably not even close to what the probability would be. Therefore, when the probabilities become absurd, then it's just the opposite. The chances of you being here is 100%. You were meant to be here. The chances of me being here is 100%. It just, the the trick of the, the scientists and these Darwin alkalites would follow is such the trick of reality itself. I, I think most of what these scientists are pursuing They're simply pursuing the reality generation machine. They're simply pursuing the trick that you and I can see through. It will give them the results they expect to get. It'll give them the results that prop up the not milk position or not milk standards that hide a real spiritual being from itself. That's that's the results that science will return. Not that the scientists, hello, if I can knock on my, hello, scientists, Nobel Prize winners, Feynman types, it, you're getting answers from reality that that serve the the dark part of reality's mission to hide a real spirit from itself. That what, Matt, here's somebody screaming at me, throwing rubber ducky here. Matt, they know this, okay? They, it, I'm just talking about the scientific level, that middle level, people at the University of Vanderbilt University, who's who really thinks that with the, if this research goes right, uh, Jake, you and up you and I could be um, up for the Nobel Prize. That, that middle level who are really trying at the upper level creeps, they know things about you know what reality buttons and levers they push. 
did whatever reality buttons and levers they push uh, cause the man Mandela effect? There was a comment. I mean, it's all possible. You know, I, I think, yeah, at that level of creep, they understand the, the governing dynamics of how reality works to a degree. I'm not sure. I don't believe they have a full understanding of who they are or what their role is or what they were designed to do. And that stuff outside the snow globe that we talked about, they're not all powerful. Um, but I think they have an understanding of how this reality works. So, um, you know, in terms of, I'm just saying the middle level scientists will always try to perform his or her experiments. They're performing their experiments inside the trick itself. Anyway, whatever. I mean, what CERN really is and what it's not. And to me, I don't think it's a cop-out just to back up far enough from it and say it's all part of the trick. What is CERN, Matt? Who cares? Who cares? It's all part of the trick. Who built the pyramids? Who cares? It's all part of the trick. That is such a cop out, Matt. It's a that, that you don't know the answer, you'll never get the so you just cop out and say it doesn't matter. It's all part of the trick. No, because I see that reality wants me to get close to it. This is how I, I will get on like a mud flood researcher. Reality wants me to investigate it and get close to it. And then it'll keep feeding me more bullshit. I can see that much of how reality works. So if, whether you don't like this or not, if I say, who cares, then, you know, that's a defense against the dark art, arts of the general reality trick and ruse that takes place here. You say, well, who cares? Matt, don't you, don't you, it's, it's a pusher man with its drugs. Come on, mud flood. Don't you want to investigate me? Who built these pyramids? Here, I'm a, I'm a pyramid. Who built me? Come on, man investigate it'll make you feel cool it'll get you a job at oxford and harvard <laughs> it'll come on man investigate me it's the it's the end of a revolver with ray ray liotta you know fear me he fear and, and the, whatever jason whatever just walks right by and he's like this is the end of the end of revolver to me ray liotta fear me that is that's either an aspect of himself that doesn't exist calling out to him or it's an, or it's the not milk itself saying fear me come on investigate me research me and jason just walks by like no this thing you know this this it it lives or it feeds from you know jason would say my fear so he just walks right by him i mean that's kind of where the not milk is to us to a degree or we're getting there you know we have a a ways to go but if the if the chances of you, the scientific chances of you being here, one in the hundreds of trillions to the hundredth power, then without a doubt, it's just the opposite. If you were meant to be here and you choose to be, you chose to be here. So, um, you know, let's do the work. It's a, the, the half page is simple. It's, it's time to, to do the work. All right, guys, like the sponsors that exist in the old fashioned radio show, once a month, I'm doing a troll channel public service announcement like I did a few days ago, but this is the one for September. We'll do one again in October. And it's just, I don't understand how anybody um, does not see the basic logic here. I don't understand how any of these troll channels even have one subscriber. I mean, it just makes no sense to me. So Matt, this is Matt, 30 seconds or less from here on out. Matt, his whole YouTube career, basically a big chunk of his life has been trying to expose this rat the not milk system, the Melvin Pease, everything here that's out to harm you spiritually and otherwise. So Matt, most people would say has been going after and exposing this. I, I, I don't know. It's just me. After thousands of videos, I could see why somebody would come to that conclusion. Okay. This rat or rats pop up and they want to go after Matt. Well, what did I do to you? Well, nothing. You've done nothing to me, but it's my mission in life just to go after you. Well, why? Just leave me. Go, go bother somebody else. But okay. Well, see, here's the logic of it. If this rat is t trying to go after, Matt's trying to go after this rat, and this rat's going after Matt, just forget Andy, put on, put on, biting on my shoulder, then, then this rat, who, Austin Powers, who does number two work for from Austin Powers? This rat is serving this rat. This rat is serving this rat if they're going after Matt. The only way to avoid that very simple logic is if this rat says, let's look at Matt's most recent video, and here's a five-minute segment of what I'm talking about, how he's misleading you, and they break down what I actually say, not what, I, what I'm actually telling you, and they say, this is where Matt is deceiving the truth community, and they show my videos, and then they have a counter position. See, that's kind of how it would work 
if anybody had a legitimate claim <laughs> with my channel. Okay, enough of that. Way too long. All right, let's do, we'll say four minutes or less on the uh, the magenta magenda update. Matt, every time you said four minutes or whatever, you've gone over, but I've kept, I but I've been aware of it and I've kept close to it. In the past, I've said, let's do 10 minutes on this and then like an hour later. So th- I'm doing pretty well. All right. Steffers, who I don't think she does blog for peace of mindful anymore. I'll tell you wherever Steffers is going to end up as a blogger. I'll certainly keep you informed of that. Again, the amount of research is just off the charts. That amount of data collected that I couldn't possibly keep up with how many terabyte quads of data she's collect things and she's looked at and i've reminded her i said give you know don't just keep going more and more into the weeds give us a summary once a month or so so this is what we know so far you know we got a long way to go but this is what we know and she's going to do that again the what we know uh, if i could just you know i'll just do a, a minute or two summary she knows a thousand times more about what's going on here than i do but there's no question the magenta color is just everywhere to a degree that I couldn't even fathom when we started looking at this initially. And again, I'm discounting for the fact, if you're throwing your rubber ducky, Matt, you're looking for it. I'm aware of that and I'm discounting that. I'm factoring that in to my equation and factoring into my equation that every time magenta presents itself, even at a little kid's lemonade stand, you know, lemonade here, 50 cents or whatever. And it's, I'm going to notice it. Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm, and, and Matt, you've, it's not just you, you've programmed us to notice it. Now we can't get the damn color out of our, this is a, guys, the, the magenta presentation, um, when Steffers presented to me and I started to look into it, it, this is, this is very real. Okay. It is everywhere, all over the place, um, to a degree that I, again, I just can't even fathom. And at the very minimum, we have to have a basic understanding as what's what's going on here so we can craft the right armor for it not that i don't think we ever need armor for anything anymore guys in this way i think we've won we've we've been working on our armor we've dropped so many veils we've the jacob marley chains we've stepped out of them is any part of their trick uh ever going to work on the at least on the old guard anymore i don't think so there's a lot of different types of people here that do fall i believe do fall for a lot of, of their tricks and historically and traditionally, the truth community has fallen for more of the not milk tricks than any other group. But it's almost like we're impervious to the trick at this point. But is it a, such a bad idea to, okay, what, notice the magenta, what are they trying to do with it? And then just create an additional level of armor. What, we don't need it, but why not, right? I mean, okay, what is going on? A lot of work to do. Um, Tesla, you know, the Tesla to me is a caricature. And I'm convinced Tesla is a caricature in this this script of reality. The reality, we live in a gigantic script. Um, the winners of reality or the life winners will deviate. They'll find, we'll say, this is a script and I'm going to deviate from it. We'll talk about that later. But Tesla is a, a character, a cartoon character, whether he existed or not. There's just too many perfect things. He's too beloved in certain communities. I don't buy it anymore. I don't buy anything anymore. So especially the, the, the Trump's uncle, come on, come on. That just that just makes the case even worse for the, the lovers of Tesla. But but there's truth and they tr- they drop truth, maybe contractual, they have to drop truth. So let's just leave that aside. The whole world or universe is, what does he say? Frequency and vibration, right? Frequency and vibration. Well, there's going to be a lot of truth drops no matter what Tesla is coming out of Tesla. So the whole, yes, the whole reality is frequency vibration. The whole reality is not very real. To me, we live in a gigantic Mandela effect where thousands of things change. We just reset to it. But what is a color? What is the the emerald green presentation now morphing into the magenta presentation? It's a frequency and it probably is a vibration too. But, it, you know, what are they doing with it? Well, there's a lot of possibilities. Um, what did TJ, I think, was talking about? Uh, it's a conditioning of some kind. You know, we heard... I mean, I know this is first grade stuff, guys, and we have, and Steffers is doing the work on it, not not me. But, you know, in the 50s, a little popcorn thing would flash up, basic subliminals, kindergarten stuff. We know the, the tools and the tactics they have now, the technologies, who knows what, if they still dabble in their black magic, what they have available to them in terms of manipulating real people or the masses, whether they're real or not, or real souls or spirit, what they have access to, their arsenal is it is beyond anything we could possibly fathom. You know, rub elbows with egregores or whatever they do. So 
but in the in the vein of this subliminal popcorn popping up and like, honey, are you hungry for popcorn? You know, the, who knows what's riding along this, the, 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 like a carrier wave potentially of the magenta. If it's their presentation of it, it's, it's not good. However, um, there have been a few people that have come out and said it is a hijack because there's something, I don't know how it was put to me, at the core of this reality realm of something that's very loving, that's very pure in some way. People have had experiences on ayahuasca or DMT that is incredibly loving and it is, uh, it is pure magenta color. I think Steffers even emailed me back and was like, yeah, on a, uh, this, there is this, this entity of some kind. Now, we're gonna, I'm, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to leave my guard up, okay? If somebody comes to me that I trust and said, I had ayahuasca or DMT, and there's this loving entity that's magenta, and I traveled here, I was taken into it, I'll say, you know, I, I believe you had that experience, but you know, are you sure it was as loving as you think? In other words, when people die, the same the NDE experience or the or the ADE or whatever, um, they say that they talk about the light as loving and it wanted to embrace me and I wanted to go into it. And, and others on, in our community or YouTube channel say that's no, that's not what you want to do. That's a trick. So we have to at least, you know, think that the, this magenta, this loving magenta being could be a trick as well. But again, we're not going to figure it out here. It's just I, I'm absolutely convinced that this is a. Um, the not milk level, the presentation of the color is at this point, it's 100 times more than I ever thought they could do and get away with. It's just everywhere I turn around at this point. And if anybody's throwing the rubber ducky and screaming at me saying, Matt, that's because we're actually assisting in its creation and its propagation and its manifestation, then th th I think that person would be right to a degree. Um, like I told, we are probably being used to assist its propagation by, by talking about it. But um, guys, again, it, it comes like, it's just when it's, when you know through, just through a few small examples or a small sample size that in some way it is being used by not milk. And then it's never good. Okay. That's never, that's never a loving thing. It's a very, very corrupting thing that I'm not going to then hide from it and say, Oh, I, I don't want to help manifest it by not talking about it. I think we're in this part. I know I've apologized for this before. We're in this phase where we have to talk about it or almost in a way we are helping it. I hear you. I hear you, but you know, I can't construct an armor spiritual or otherwise without understanding the nature of the attack. What is it going to be? Is it going to come in as flaming arrows or are they going to come with long spears? I need to understand how to, how to um, push back against it. And even if we did nothing, would we be capable of not being corrupted by it? I think we, we would be, the old guard would be, but that doesn't mean, you know, we don't have a, a duty to kind of look into it further. I, I will commit to you this. I will not just continue to point out the magenta color forever without a resolution on it because that would be aiding it to a degree or benefiting it so um you know some it's some people talk well I, there's a lot of different theories there's no reason to do any more than we're doing here especially until we get at least the first summary or so uh from steffers i'll visit the sum or I'll, I'll go through the summary and then i'll dive more into you know her her details where originally, remember, I, I read something from her, an email a few weeks back, where it's she's saying basically the reality itself is driven by the light. The light spectrum is a presentation of reality itself. So there, there's a lot here, guys. I'll, I'll, I'll stay on top of it. And when we have something, I'm not going to talk about it too much more until we have something concrete to talk about. Guys, I think there are a lot of real people here. You know, I don't know how many background characters there are, NPCs, but I think there are a lot of real people, but they're so much on the ship of fools, which means to me they're on the download or on the frequency to take the download, that they just believe everything they're doing in their lives is completely normal, and they just can't see any other way. And this is one of the main reasons why we appear crazy, of course, or just how I'm sure all my friends, I've said it a million times, that it where did they, where they get together? And I don't really interact with, I don't even interact with Tony, but the, you know, there's two Tonys, but the, my friend Tony, and they probably say, where did 
how could Matt have lost his way? <laughs> I mean, they just don't, you know, they'll never, they'll never see it. And we guys, we need to talk about this. All we've done and sacrificed, we have to make sure that all we've, we've, we've sacrificed is worth it. I'm going to talk about that in the last segment. I've been, I was pondering a, a lot of that over the last week. If nothing else, we have to make sure every sacrifice we have made, the loss of relationships, the loss of friends, family, job, we have to make sure that it's worth it. And I think it will be, it will be worth it. But I'm not sure we're quite there yet. That's what I, that's what I want to talk about. So my friends, what was the date, do you think, when he doesn't appear crazy? So, so it's just that it's very simple, guys, for anybody in the, in the back of the classroom that came in from clearing fields. Did you clear the south field? The swimming breaks really get in the way. Now, come on in. Then it's just um, um, frequency and, and frequency, Tesla, frequency vibration on the ship of fools. They're real people. They're on, they've, they've, they've agreed to put themselves on the frequency, the vibration, the not milk download. And as weird as things get, they just, just, just normal to them. And then as we are on the bank, as the ship sails, we appear crazier and crazier. Okay. Now I don't, again, I think most people are real and they're in this predicament. You know, they're, they're, they act so strange that many of us in this community say they must be NPCs or they're not, but I don't think that's it. I just think, I think, I think that everybody will basically become an automaton if they're on the frequency and the download. And one, I know this isn't the greatest example, but it's fascinating to me. And it's, 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 you know, people will fire rubber duckies if I don't keep this under three minutes, but this phenomenon with, um, I'm starting to watch some college football again and the download and, the, and these people on the frequency, it all comes through to me so obviously just revisiting college football. A couple, th- I'll try to keep, the, if the, it doesn't have to do with college football. This is just an interesting reality case study for those about to fire rubber duckies. I have a very fun rubber ducky image I'm going to present <laughs> that's, that um, was given to me recently, uh, but I'm not I'm sure I'm going to show it in this video. Maybe I will try to work it in, in the beginning, but um, these coaches, nobody does the, I don't have a right, we need a better word. Like when I say try to do the human thing or make the human decision, we know that's a not milk world word. I need to replace that word uh, as soon as possible. We'll just go with it for now. These coaches, you know, none of them, they just keep, this one will bounce over to this, uh, new job at USC to, to make 20 extra million dollars. These, these college coaches, their contracts now are for big name schools are 70 to a hundred million dollars for anybody. If you just threw up your cookies, Arnold Schwarzenegger and twins cookies or cookies. I look forward to tossing them. If you just tossed them, I'm sorry, 70 to a hundred million dollars for a coach. And th- this coach, one coach was, let's just give you the, the specific examples at Oklahoma. This is a major program. And I think, I forget the guy's name, some irritating little dude. He now leaves Oklahoma, massive college football program. Everybody who was beloved on campus, he has to go um, and be the head coach at USC for a little bit more prestigious job. Now he's in Hollywood. Maybe his contract's probably $30, $40 million more. But but in other words, back to the, the, the bad word of human, but nobody makes the human decision. You never see one of these people ever – take a, a, a microphone. They all follow the same script. That's what everybody on the Ship of Fools does. Like if it was you or me and we were happy, happy to be the head coach of the, the Oklahoma Sooners, a dream job. Everybody loves you. You've already won a national championship or two, whatever this guy's name is. And there's rumors that you're going to take this job or USC wants you or Oregon wants you or anybody real. Or we were the last real bastion of real people would take the podium and say, why would I leave this dream job over... A little bit of money or why would i why would i go anywhere the pe- i walk down the street here the people love me i mean he wouldn't be saying this in the microphone but i have a job here forever as long as we do pretty well i'm beloved here i rebuilt oklahoma's program i mean it's just the most incredible situation it's like i'll try to wrap this up guys i know this is just so fascinating to me this college football and there's one other thing i want to mention about it that's the end of the video so i guess the people are that are still here are more willing to put their feet up and just, just give me the time um, to get this out. But I will try to go on to another topic, more important topics. But um, when after the whole Joe Paterno, Sandusky, you know, issue with Penn State and all that, all that craziness and, you know, the staff was fired and would the football program even survive? Um, this guy came up from the New England Patriots, just seemed like a regular 
pretty nice, good guy named Pat, uh, uh, Pat O'Brien. <laughs> Was his name Pat? Coach O'Brien. Let's just call him that. Is it Pat O'Brien? Rich O'Brien. Whatever. Coach O'Brien came up and basically revitalized the program. A lot of people at Penn State thought they would just get rid of the football program after that scandal. And he, you know, just in two years, put it back, uh, put it back on the map to where it rebuilt itself back up. Okay. Now, this person at this time is beloved. Beloved. He could have got this massive um, contract and been there forever. And he would be, people would bow down, would throw their jacket down into the puddle for, was it Rich O'Brien, um, because of he saved the program. But no, he has to always, they always have to do better. They always want the bigger job. Millions of, and he had special needs children, or he had some, a child that was very special needs, had all the facilities at Penn State. He, you know, but he has to get back into the, the limelight and run the rat race and keep up with the Joneses. And he goes to become the head coach at Houston Texans in the, in the NFL and has five or six or seven tough years where they don't do as well. And then he's constantly berated in front of the press and, you know, the news fire coach O'Brien. And why would you, he could have stayed at Penn State again for tens of millions of dollars and that just a, a, a dream job. It's not, you know, it's, it's easy compared to the NFL. Why do you always have to, it's the not milk thing or people on the frequency and the download, they always have to go for more. And just why, why? It's, it's not that much different than Warren Buffett can never retire. Or do you think Zuck the Borg will ever separate himself from Facebook? If he does, it'll be a false separation like micro, Bill, Bill saying he's no longer chairman of Microsoft, but he's minding the, every little bit. Or Vladimir Putin going off, so I'm no longer the president, but and the Medvedev was just a puppet of Putin, of course. So it'll be like that. So he gets fired. Now he's back as, as a... As a offensive coordinator for Alabama, which he'll probably be the next coach of the Crimson Tide, which isn't bad either. But it's like, it's a, okay, sorry to be long-winded, guys, but hey, nobody can ever just be happy with their, and we're not talking about, he's not bagging groceries next to Red at Shawshank. He, millions of dollars. The whole Penn State campus just loves you. You do whatever you want. Go on vacation whenever you want. He go he'd call up and say, "I want to hire a whole army of recruiters, so you don't have to go do the recruiting yourself." He was set up for life. Nope, not good enough. Got to go for more. Got to go for more. Why? It's just it's incredible. Anyway, the last thing about college football guys with the frequency and the download is um, the um, they cannot, and this is part of the ruination of of all that was once good. The ruination of sports. They cannot mention these announcers. I've noticed this for this year and last year, but it is off the charts in the few games I've seen this year. The announcers cannot mention a player if they transferred in from another school. They'd have to say where they transferred from. It's just like a law, a rule. Um, Back to receive the pun is the transfer from Vanderbilt. All about, and this transfer portal is part of the ruination of college football. There's a ruination taking place across all sports. Sports 30, 40, 50 years ago was, you know, some, I know this triggers part of the truth community. It was a pretty good thing. It was pretty true. There's nothing wrong with the comp- being in the avatar. It's just some f- competition, testing yourself. Nothing wrong with that. It's too, it's too um, bashed by a holier-than-thou segment of the truth community. I agree with you. If I'm not here to put words in your mouth. But what sports has become? Ben Simmons, this ultimate mega bum walking around the court of the Philadelphia 76ers. He's, he's ob- hobnobbing with the K- Caitlyn and, and the Kardashians and the Caitlyn Jenners and the Jenners, and he's out in Hollywood. He can't even make a foul shot. He, he can't even shoot a 10-foot jump shot. That bum Ben Simmons, $180 million or $200 million. If people in this truth community object what sports has become, of course, we're all there. But they they still seem to they, they would still bash I believe all sports even like what baseball was in the 20s and 30s that's in, for another video it's all being destroyed the purity of of some would agree it was pure I would agree it was pure at one point um, read a, a book by the old a lot of these Penn State guys are are dead now they they wrote about what their experience was like in the 30s and 40s or playing football right after World War II and coming to campus. And there was no place for them to even sleep. Uh, at, and, and, and then they found dorms for these guys. And they, they had no scholarships. 
and they're just playing for the love of football and they they had no money and they, they would go to the dormitories there's always not dormitories they Penn State always had these big huge fraternity buildings I mean you know like Tudor style beautiful they would go to these fraternities and be like you know can I work these football players can I work your cafeteria to get a to get a meal I mean this is the pure love of the game okay so college football is in terms of the ruination of all sports it's it's in ter- from not milk standards it's it's lagging they would want it more ruined than it is so they've com- like completely ruined baseball uh, for m- many people the nfl is completely ruined for real people but hockey and the and and college football and some other sports are lacking they're trying to ruin it but just you know it's behind schedule from a not milk perspective one way to bring it up to schedule a little bit in terms of its ruination is that a word um is this transfer portal we're now um not only kids can just just leave school to go play for another school like they're again becoming the the asset or the commodity of the system of the sick system and they they in the past they used to have to wait out wait a year it's very hard to transfer oh i don't like penn state i want to go play for west virginia well you got to sit out a whole year do you really want to transfer so they made it tough and then you kind of these guys would come in and you'd know the players you'd, you'd see them progress through the freshman sophomore junior and senior years um free agency ruined football and they're 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 just mimicking free agency in football to um this should be a whole i need to do a whole video on this at some point mimicking free agency in football i want to talk about this saudi golf league ruining golf this ridiculous saudi golf league so but the announcers every single to promote the transfer process they don't even know how they're serving the not milk system um kicking for uh, arizona state the transfer in from ucla every time they have to say the transfer it's it gets ridiculous say well why is it so important to say where they transferred in it's absolutely a proof of the download and of the frequency it is absolutely serving i can't get into i'd love to do uh, if, if I can get away with it, I know a lot of you guys don't like this topic. A 30, 40 minute video on this is how this is helping to destroy college football and the other ways the not milk is out to destroy it. Um, it, it I just can't get into it, but it, it is part of the ruin ruination of it. Part, one, let's, let me do 45 seconds or less. Back, when I grew up watching the Philadelphia Eagles, they were bad, you know, in the 70s uh, and early 80s. But you knew the players. You'd go out to training camp. You get autographs. You, I slapped uh, Jerry Robinson, who was a was a linebacker, high five once, and you got to know them and like them, and then you know they'd be back next year. And every year it's new players. They just there's no loy the loyalty becomes to not milk presentations. The loyalty goes to not milk symbols like the, the the eagles on the helmet or the color or the logo. It's not to the people. It's it's removing the human side. It was kind of sucks if you had a bad team. You kind of knew you were stuck with these guys. They couldn't. They had to be traded. They couldn't just go. And now it's the same with college football. It's like, well, who is Penn State play have playing? I don't know. Twenty guys left. Twenty guys came in. It is without a doubt, and and I mean, I am one hundred percent sure of this. I, you know, it's my own opinion, of course, but I, I have. It's I'm one hundred percent confident in my own opinion that this is a not milk tactic. To, to, to just move college football a little closer to being ruined. And the, what's so fascinating about it in terms of the, those on the ship of fools and the, the download, the, the announcers, um, nobody, nobody took them aside, men in black, and said, you need to always mention the transfer. You know, they, they might have gotten, they probably got a, a, a memo, a, a TPS report at some point, or something from the NCA saying, you know, CBS Sports, tell your people that, you know, we're really – proud of our transfer portal and what we're doing to allow these kids to go to new schools, always positing it in a, in a, in a, per, in a nice friendly light when it's the ruination of, of the human side of, of everything. And, you know, have your people mention it. And they probably told him, got a little TPS report of Joe Buck or whoever does the announcing that, yeah, mention the transfers. And if it was, it, it's just unnatural how many, they have to do it every time. And to me, it's way beyond getting a TPS report and remembering that the NCAA might want this. The NCAA, by even putting that out, saying mention the transfers, is following uh, an auto- automatonic, uh, automatonic uh, f- download, put the My Favorite Martian download frequency up. And they're, they're doing what the not milk wants at the NCAA level or, or the head of the chairman of the NCAA without getting any instructions from the men in black. This is where the, you know, again, it's just ship of fools 
uh, proof uh, over and over again. And um, it's just unnatural. Where we talked about, you know, passing it along, we're just two years ago, out of the blue, everybody that was either, you know, um, a junior or, or, or Brian Smith the third or Brian Smith the fourth, everybody had to put the junior, the fourth, or even senior on the back of their jersey, just came out of the blue. Nobody was told to do it. it and it, the, the, the amount of seeing it just it became 10 times more prevalent overnight than we've ever seen it before. It, the passing it along philosophy is, is, is the ship of fools on the, these people, on the frequency, on the download. Well, Matt, are you saying this? this the the not milk in some way would want a college football student to, to say Brian Smith the third and to put that? I don't know where how that happens or where the. I'm not saying that's a nefarious not milk tactic in itself. It's just maybe a certain group. It's like a hundred monkeys on steroids, with the the people on the ship of fools and on the frequency on the download. Maybe a small group did it, and it's like. The reason why I don't know what the, the concept is. If you have a hundred women in close quarters in a sorority, everybody starts doing their, you know, their moon or moon cycle thing. You know, at the same time, it just kind of it just happened. Hundred monkeys is real, and the knot milk knows how to use this, and everybody just starts starts doing it. Somebody paints. They do the college football. They will put black. Under they put you know they'll either put black in their whole face with this black eye black stuff which they don't nobody really needs it doesn't do that much if you're about to catch a pun in the sun but now that a lot of them are doing it they'll just do it under the one eye or the right eye or the left eye the eye black uh, please somebody will take that out of concept context what I just did there um, but then you see it all the time now you can't watch a college football game without he says the eye eye black under one eye or or right eye presentation. And look, they, they're not, trust me, these kids are not, they don't know about the secret societies and they don't, nobody in the men in black came in or they're not uh, hopeful skull and bones initiates. No. Okay. No, it, it's just passed along. These kids don't know why they're doing it. Two years ago, it started, excuse me, it started with one pant leg up, one down. Which I know is, I, you know, isn't that a Masonic thing? I, I don't know, but I've, you know, but, but they just started doing it, and then many do it. One pant leg, uh, one sock up. One, they're not try, They're not in, involved or in on anything. It's just, it's just the way the reality works. It's uh, the when sh those on the ship of fools, on the download on the frequency, it becomes a hundred monkey syndrome, times a million. Uh, the minions, the high level minions of not milk reality know what buttons and levers to push. They know how to manipulate reality every so ever so subtly to lead to the eventual ruination of sport or whatever you would consider to be all that was once good. And it is when you can see it, when you can read the matrix code, you know, sometimes it is hard to watch a sport. I and mean, like that is that's unnatural. Real people wouldn't do that. They're following the not milk script. They're doing what the not milk wants. Sometimes it's difficult, um, but um, you know, again, there's not too many sports that I watch. I still NASCAR, college football, and um, I probably would still watch some hockey if the Flyers weren't for 20 years the worst team in the league. Okay, I thought about this a lot uh, during the say past week. It's one of the most important questions we could ever ask ourselves in this community. It potentially has never even been talked about in any video in the entire community. I don't think I've ever put it exactly like this, but I'm thinking what could be more important? I won't have any exact answers here, but I just have to start talking about it and float it. Um, we have to make sure if we've made this sacrifice, we've investigated these things, we've determined reality to be something 179 and a half degrees or closer to 180 degrees different from what we thought when we were growing up or when we were in college or when we were in the matrix working for the big corporation. We have to make sure um, if we make these sort of sacrifices that it's worth it. Okay. So what does that mean? You know, all I can do in this case is go back to the absolute basics and see where it develops. Okay, I'm in mean, doing this. I'm sorry if I if I'm speaking for you, but I have to have to assume we have consensus in a lot of areas. So we do basically what we do, um, not for this life, 
but for the next. Okay, so we do what we do, not for this life, for the next. So at the absolute basics, we all believe that we are part of, you know, an immortal spirit, something far greater than this little tiny incarnation. Okay, that that's obvious. That's a given. In terms of almost everybody that he is here, their fear of death has gone down, you know, from 90% down to like almost nothing. I mean, it's I, I can't speak for you, but we have similar commonalities in this area. Obviously, if we if we were atheists, we didn't think there was anything after death, no other experiences, no greater aspects of ourselves. Then what are we what are we sacrificing here? We what are we going? Th- just go out and go to the NFL or so go watch the NFL game with your best friend or something. What are we doing all this for? So we we obviously we all agree is some sort of a sacrifice. Um, needing to be made here, but it's not it's not the sacrifice in and of itself, like the Silas in Da Vinci Code putting that strap on his leg and pulling it and just trying to make himself suffer. In terms of the things that we believe we need to understand about reality, about ourselves, about the, the, the sides of us that this reality wants to push to the forefront and to foster, then it's not the sacrifice for the sake of sacrifice, like Silas and his spikes. It's, well, we, to accomplish certain things for ourselves, which learning about ourselves goes hand in hand with learning about the reality and all the tricks that it's playing and all its its endless ruse and its attempt to suck energy. It just goes hand in hand that when we start walking this true path, whatever you want to call it, um, we ha- there is tons of sacrifice. You know, we, we lose our jobs, or we lose our wives, or we lose our husbands, or we lose our friendships. It just, it, it just, it's not compatible. Stand, just standing on the bank is not compatible with sailing away on the ship of fools. Maybe for a few months we try to have a, a foot on the bank and you have a foot up on the ship of fools, but that ship is sailing away and you're doing a bigger and bigger split you're going to fall into the water like i've told people and it's not just like when you tell your friends what you believe about 2001 it's almost like it's like an agent smith thing they just kind of you know they or it's like the invasion of the body snatchers like they just kind of know or, or they they're they're all the agent smiths and they just kind of you know they just kind of know that you're completely on a different boat than they are and maybe they don't go <gasps> They don't scream at you, but it's it's like that. So we we try to be. Oh, we're gonna. We, you can you can. I'll have one ship on the sh- one foot on the ship of fools. I'll still go to the NFL with my best friends. It just doesn't work. You can't have a ship a foot on the ship. You're, it's gonna f- split and fall. It does not work. And if you've been able to extend it out longer than others, well, you know that's great. I I just I was kind of the opposite. I just started. I did the wrong thing. I try. I thought everybody had the same ability to kind of wake up to it as I did. It just was a matter of delivering the information. I mean, boy, did we learn our <clears throat> our lesson. And we, you know, we thought we thought, well, well, if I could just show people, they'll wake up to it as I have. And ah, boy, that was you know, we tried to wake people. It was like 2010 to 2014, 2015. It was just this is where you very quickly lose all everybody around you as they like in the matrix more from a truck driver into an agent smith and like just like they live this one can see they don't they don't your friend or your your brother or your cousin will never believe that you know anything i mean you're just completely literally off their reservation they become um maybe there's something deep down that their ego or their conscious mind isn't even aware of where you are become like the enemy so, okay, we understand the sacrifices and all the crap that we've gone through. We better make sure we've done this all for a reason or, or for the right reasons. So I don't exactly know where to go with this now. So let's just jump to the, uh, you take it to the absolute opposite end of the spectrum. Okay, um, day of our death comes and as quickly as time goes by, we're bit, to me, we're already dead. I mean, just, it just, it'll be, it'll be blah, blah, boom, boom. It'll it's so fast anymore. Um, whether it be real time speeding up or my perception of it, it's just ridiculous anymore. So, um, but I don't, you know, I don't really, I don't want to suffer as in, in this body. I don't, I don't want to go through that, but I don't have basically any fear of, of death. I mean, uh, is it, 
if a meteorite was coming and going to destroy the earth tomorrow, would I be like, oh, that's cool? I'd be, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be, I have limitation. I'd be scared, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's down 95% or whatever over what it was. So let's say we die and then let's just go back and do um, a two minute first conversation after life with that same entity or whatever. I'm not going to call it master. Oh boy, whatever. Um, it's saying, you, you know, you talking to you or your God talking to you, like, you screwed up. You were, that was just, that, you went on that conspiracy, um, you got on that conspiracy train or whatever. That was just part of the trick. Like that was no different than your friends over here. Like they went out and they just worshiped people coming down the red carpet and you just, that was your distraction. And you didn't have to, to do all that. Like you, you, you messed up that you lost all your friends and family and your job. And that was your interest. And you became thought you were holier and thou, thou investigating this truth. And that's going to give you some, whatever, some status, or you're going to level up or something. You, you, you screwed up, dude. And we watched it from up here on the other side of the snow globe. We watched you toil in your truth and your conspiracy stuff down. You, are we going to get a lecture? I mean, I look, I don't think so. I just have to keep this on the table. I don't believe that. I mean, I don't want to scare anybody that yeah, we, we wasted our time. I don't believe that. What I'm, I'm just saying, we have to talk about it. We, I have to keep it on the table. Um, do I think, I mean, just from a very basic sense, your inner knowing says, you know, we haven't done things the, the best. We haven't done things right. We've made so many mistakes, but generally we're now emerging to pretty much the right path. I, I do believe that. So if you're in a reality where the entire reality is a trick, a ruse to get you to act in a certain way, to attach to a part of you that's not real, to completely forget a whole spiritual aspect of you or something that may exist outside of here and to try to get back in touch with it. I mean, how could anybody say that that, is, um, that was the wrong thing to do and you really should have been been attending any every single NFL game and every, oh, I see um, what's being presented to me, ghost in concert, Pfft, ghost. Go watch it. You want to see something creepy. Watch a YouTube video of a ghost concert. It makes um, like, uh, it, what is it? Insane clown posse look normal. Um, so no, I don't. I don't think we. You know that. It, it, if if on, at the moment of our death we have a certain realization that it's going to be the pursuit that we took is going to be the same as if we would just followed and toured around with ghost. No, I don't think it'll be the same. I really, or I wouldn't be doing all that I've done. I, I have no. I don't have any regrets that I've lost friends or people think of me in a certain way. I just don't. I don't. So, but I'm just saying, I, I'm, I need to keep this on the table. So, because I, here's one reason, because if somebody said to me, Matt, um, may, all that you've sacrificed, and everybody here has the same sacrifices to a degree, make sure, you need to make sure you did this for the, for, for the right reasons. I mean, in, across the board. And there's, there's, there's something that I'm not, I'll just say me, I don't want to say we, there's something that I'm still not doing right. Um, and it might be about, it might be about do, doing the work. Like if, if um, you know, on the day of my death, um, talking to, you know, whoever like that scenario in the last video said, well, you saw the trick, you know, that was actually the easy part. You saw it was all a ruse. You saw these minions were just serving something very dark to get you to do this or to get your energy. And you saw the trick. That, that's good. But you didn't. That's just one part. You didn't do the back part, which we've talked about the work. And um, you know, the, you, using this reality for what it's for, we have to be very. In terms of making sure it's worth it, we have to make sure that. You know, we, we, we had the tendency 10 years ago, like, or five years ago, well, we can see the trick, so we've won. I even said that myself. And now I see it completely differently. Okay, we've seen the trick. That's the easy part. We haven't won yet until we do the work, work on ourselves. Not these dumb terms like inner work, shadow work. Blah, blah, blah. Just, just, okay, this is a, we see what this is. It's a trick. So, is that why, is that the only reason I came into this incarnation and this existence? Just to see through the trick? Um, just to know. You see through the trick, it's like, well, what, what is this system, this not milk system, keeping me from doing? Why does it, it wants me to go spend 10 years on mud flood versus doing what? 
you know, what else could I be doing? Um, and even if it's something like, you know, that it would say, you know, something basic that's almost like become like a cliche, like go volunteer at the homeless shelter, just because that's the first thing on the bullet point list that's kind of a cliche, that doesn't mean that's not spiritually rewarding and enriching and you shouldn't go do it. That, that you know, if you spend all the time researching mud flood, you're not volunteering down at the homeless shelter, whatever it, it may be. To me, it's like, I say more like dropping off the baggage. I alluded to this a little bit in the last video. Um, this place is kind of here to, you can drop the baggage and do the work and drop the baggage. I'll give, I'll just have to present this example. It seems so trivial in terms of doing the work where this fear I have about the trash not, not being picked up. I shared this with, with Mark and somebody said to me, it's not, is it a fear, but it just, if the trash isn't picked up, it bothers me, okay, unnaturally, more than it would bother almost anybody else. And we've had this issue, but the, I'll just give you the ending. The ending is I'm doing this work and I've, I've, I'm now 95% coming out of it um, for the better. And I know it seems ridiculous, but every we all have these issues. Somebody said to me, "Well, you must have you're in a past life. You lived like in a garbage, uh, uh, a, you know, a city where the garbage became diseased, or you, something. You you have this reason you have to get rid of the garbage. And when it's not picked up, like the last five or six weeks, we've had all sorts of problems because of the part shortage and all this stuff. That part of the script that's being laid down through reality. But it bothers the heck out of me." You know, like I'm, it's more than you can imagine, like, but not anymore. I'm, I'm, I've really said, Matt, you can keep talking to people on YouTube and saying what you should do, but it's time to do it yourself. And Matt, in terms of work, that's nothing. You have a whole lot more to do than just being afraid the trash isn't picked up. Of course we do, but it's just an example where, you know, I'll go, I'll go out there at 10 o'clock, check it, still haven't been picked up. Should I call them? I mean, it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Somebody actually said to me, your past life, you were some quarter, you live in some sort of trash dump that caused all sorts of problems. That's why you got to get rid of it, whatever it may be. So, but I've, I've, uh, I've like, what, what, okay. And if I, instead of, you know, trying to control everything, what can I do to work on myself here? And you just go through the process. Well, I know this is, seems so trivial, but guys, we, we need to do this in hundreds of different areas. All of us do. And this is, again, just scratching the surface as the total work we need to do on ourselves here, which means leaving behind the baggage to improve. You say, well, I can get another vendor if I had to. You know, what is it? It's not, is it a, it's like 100 to $120 every quarter to have trash picked up here in this part of Pennsylvania. I can get another vendor. I know this A.J. Blazinski doesn't ever seem to, to miss. I'll just get, so then I, now I, I know where the trash dump is for Chester and Lancaster County. I have to drive up there for 40 minutes. I, can, I have ways to get rid of it and just keep going through this process. It's not fooling yourself. It's just doing, so this stuff doesn't bother you anymore, this petty stuff. And it's like, well, that problem, I have a hundred other problems and idiosyncrasies that I need to get over. And, you know, again, in terms of, um, and then it gets into, that is scratching the surface, and it gets into serious major things like forgiving somebody, you know, like that sort of thing that I, I'm not in any way expert at. Like if somebody, you know, do you forgive them? Um, you know, the it's, it's the um, Matt Damon, um, what is it, um, Goodwill Hunting, it's not your fault. It's not your, and then he starts crying and they have a, a kumbaya moment. And there's all this stuff we have to do here but we that seeing the trick and seeing through 2001 just the, the endless seeing it that's the trick that it never wants you to get off that carousel it never wants you to get off that fer ferris wheel so you could actually really improve yourself and um you know unfortunately it's like okay yeah we see through the trick um now the wor real work begins <laughs> so there's a lot you know there's a lot left to do but in terms of what what was initially floated in this segment will will we have regrets will um we have to make sure we all the sacrifices we made are we doing it for the right reasons um again i absolutely am i have no regrets i, I looking back you know I, I would have done things a little bit differently in dealing with my cousins or certain parts of the family or my friends i would have done things a little bit different but i don't i don't have any regrets i don't beat myself up because how would we how would we have known how would we have known the metaphysical wonders of this reality where we have 
a certain uh, event. I'm not saying any more than that. Somebody, you know, somebody comes in laughing and how could we have known that it just would have been almost impossible to show people. And, it, it, you know, part of how reality protects itself is not, you know, they'll never, people will never ever sit down with you and look at what you've seen in, in the, in the investigation and research that you've put in. It's just something It's just, it, reality gives itself away in that regard every single time. And it's just, it's a symptom of reality itself. Every single time, quote, my friend, Tony, he'll just, oh, you know, I won't tell him anything anymore. I don't go, I don't try to push conspiracy on him anymore. But every single time over 10 years, like, I'm going to, I'll go research it. Well, don't you want to see my research? I have it already. I can even come to your house with a little laptop. No, they, they just can't. They'll follow the script, ship of fools, river of insanity, download frequency that just, they'll fi always find a way that will never work for them. They will always research it on their own. They will find what they want to find. And then you'll be, oh, Matt, you're, that was easily debunked. The sites I went to, all that stuff you're so interested in, Matt, was so easily debunked. It's the same theme over and over. And at some point, you know, I said, you know, we started in 2016 or started to notice that this is a symptom of reality itself. This is too strange to keep happening over and over again. And then we started to learn more about ourselves. So the, the, the question floated was, we, we, in terms of if I have to grade myself, I mean, did we do this for the right reasons? Um, yes, I'll give myself, you know, very high marks in this regard, but that wasn't really the initial question floated. The initial question floated was, we have to make sure as we've done what we've done and live the rest of our lives, we have to make sure it's worth it. So it would be like the first conversation after your death, if we went, I'll revisit that, be like, was it, was it worth it? And, and somebody's talking to you. Or, yeah, well, you, you lost all your friends. You, you, you went down this conspiracy path and you got caught up in all this false conspiracy, but then you came out of it. But then none of your friends would really take you back and your family thought you were crazy. And then, okay, so you got yourself to this point, but then it wasn't, you know, somebody might be saying to you after death, just don't, don't take too much detail. I'm just throwing this out and don't, don't latch onto it. Like the person that said, master, um, you know, but it wasn't worth it. Look, you look what you gave up at sacrifice. But did you leave all your baggage down there on Earth like you could have? That's what it was. You didn't realize that was for to leave your fears behind, to leave your baggage. You could have dropped everything off of that place. Be like, you know, like a, in my perspective, from my example, like a, a dumpster. Like, oh my gosh, you know, I've never like dumped or anything like that. You know, the signs. It's, it's. I don't. You know, that's not. It's illegal to illegal dump, and I would never, never do that. But it's like, from my example, them saying it would be like it was that reality was the bigger, biggest open dumpster of all time. You were allowed to dump everything in there, the whole reality, your whole lifetime. That was a four. Leave behind your anger. Leave behind your fear. Just dump it. Leave it behind in the earth place. You didn't realize Matt talking to Matt or whatever that that's what that place was for. And I that is a big issue. I mean, that is a big. Um, I do believe that. I really do. Dump it here. That is what it's for. Whatever that means. Whatever that means to you. And it is kind of like the forgiveness thing to a degree. Or that it's not your fault, son. Or whatever. It, it, you know, Dump it out here. And it might be like it wasn't worth it because you you lost all your friends family you didn't and then you didn't you didn't dump any of your stuff out you didn't over, you still had your same petty fears going into death and you know so, so so you talking to you after your death it's like it wasn't worth it for you man you gave up all if so all that we've given up in sacrifice make sure it's worth it do it go the whole way i'll just run the 400 meters and oh there's the finish line just fall down like fake an injury or something because we're, we're not there yet. We have not crossed the finish line. I don't know what exactly is, but I sense, we all sense, we have so much, not so much more, but we significant things left to do. Um, and even if some, all this truth cataclysm and all this bull crap that, you know, I don't, I don't buy into any of that, but even if nothing happens, our own lives, many of us in this community are 40, 50, 60. We don't, not going to, be here too much longer. You know how quick things go. Now it'll be an instant. Boom, 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 boom. But you got to do it now. So I don't have any more answers in this regard, but you probably have an idea of what I'm trying to say. And even if it's something, start with the small, seemingly petty stuff, like my garbage thing.
That seems like nothing. But you right now, you could walk into your kitchen and find one little idiosyncrasy. And it's like, um, yeah, it bothers me that, you know, my kid never puts these cookies away. I mean, something, I don't know, something. And I, if, if you get over that where, you're, where your, your kids can leave the cookies out, are you going to advance up to 10th dimension? That's not enough. But you got to start small. Now, if the kid, if the cookies are covered with ants, and but if there's if there's just a reason something bothers you or whatever it may be, and there's really no reason you should let it bother you, we have a lot more to do in this life than that. But just just don't. Every little thing helps, and then it, I think it'll be like a wave will will of momentum uh, we can build. Um, I told you I'm good at talking the talk. I'm good at kind of seeing what we're supposed to do here. But in terms of me actually doing it, I'll give myself. I've gone leaps and bounds in the last, since the CV thing, but I'll give myself a B minus um, in terms of, in, but before that, I mean, I'd give myself almost an F. Oh, Matt's, he can break down every fake event and, and I, you know, I could tell you um, what did and didn't happen here and this ruse and all that and see through the ruse. But in terms of personal, what I should, I need to do here in this worth system for myself, it was an F. So what if I could see through all these tricks and ruse? I've done nothing for myself up until, the, say, the last three years ago. And even now with the sense thing, Monday is is vision. You know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, a, a different sense dominates the day. We're to the stop, and these these sayings exist for a reason. Stop and smell the roses. I went out, and I have this thing where I'll forget, so I try to, like, ha- hit my head in a certain way. So remember, remember. And, I'll, and, I'll, and I have to, you have to come back an hour later and say, okay, remember, hit my, like, tap or a little way, or whatever your little ritual is. Like, so I, re- I want to remember this experience. Your higher self could say, yeah, you, but you were supposed to, your higher self could say, you were supposed to bring me not just the fear of conspiracy and the hatred of a bush creature, but um, the experiences, you know, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't, and you didn't do the affirmation. So you'd allow the aspect of yourself to, the affirmation say, all these experiences, I, I, make it so i allow them to get out of here they're no longer blocked we'll talk about that some other time this is getting really long I, these affirmations i think are huge where the creatures could almost say you know you didn't you didn't do this 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 and this all you had to do to do all that was just say make it so and declare it that's part of the rules here the contract i so i don't know if it is or not but i don't take those chances anymore say so if there's anything limiting the spiritual aspect of me from getting this full experience, I take it down. I see through it. I through my affirmation. I allow it all out now. You know, whatever I've said that a few times, and it, you know, why not? Assume, why not? You know, I'm not going to take any chances that those affirmations are not that powerful. So, talking about a different sense. Um, sorry, a different sense every day. Um, was went outside. It was just. I was still looking for. I was look for the lightning bugs, the fireflies just getting to be dusk, and it's just an amazing night, even though it's been so dry here, and it is kind of bothering me how we can't get a damn lick of rain, but, you know, the trees, you know, they've, we've had good rain for the last few years before this, and they're doing fine, just some of the bushes need watering, whatever, whatever, see, that's one thing, that does bother me, that does bother me, it's like another day with no rain, before. it starts to bother me, it's like, wait a second, this is petty, you need to get over this, but it was still, a beautiful night. I just wait a second. This is. I'm not just going to walk back inside. I need to go take this in. You know, uh, the smelling of the roses and whatever aspect of me that's not here. I need to share it with the aspect of me that's not here. And I and I, I just look at things, smell things in a different sense. It's all part of. You know, I think Tony would say that um, it's not up to the higher self for you to get out of this reality system or walk out of the game. It's up to you to basically convince your higher self that you've done enough. We've 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 done had enough experience. We've done enough to get to be able to walk out at any time. It's like he he would say, you know, you're more if you're a small aspect of your spiritual whole, you're more important than you think. Um, maybe you're waking up and realizing everything that needs to be done, where the other spiritual incarnations that are happening potentially simultaneously aren't getting it. They're working in the severance corporation somewhere or they're doing they're in the nfl and they're just following they're all succumbing to the trick you might be the one that can save all the little aspects of you or at least pre- prevent it from going on for thousands of more years or whatever if you believe in that sort of thing so um point is i, I i've been 
very happy with my grade, my self grade for doing the work, uh, especially since the C V thing started. But I sense there's a lot more to do. Sorry for being long winded, guys. Um, it's a long one. But there was a lot of catching up. Was it what she say in the end of Animal House? Um, they go down to the the basement. She goes down to meet Boone. Boone was it? No, Pinto. Flounder. Flounder. No, Pinto. She got a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, talk to you guys soon.